Well, hi, Matt. Thank you for joining us. Hope of course. That was fun, and now we're going to talk. Um, I'm Mara. I'm a creative director here at Atlantic Records and part-time Q&A moderator. So your music is super unique in that it really encapsulates a bunch of different genres, and you have, obviously, an incredible voice. Thank so you. can you tell us a little bit about some of your musical influences and some of your musical interests that kind of inspire you? Yeah, um, I was raised on Christian music until I was like 15 years old because my parents were pastors and they used to be very strict so they wouldn't let me listen to any secular music. So I had to find like the good Christian music which is hard because it really sucks. <laughs> and uh, at about 15 I got to the point where it was like, you know, fuck you, I'm a rebel, I'm gonna listen to whatever I want to. Um, and then I just started getting into like, um, Jeff Buckley was a big one. Uh, this band called Manchester Orchestra is a really big one. Um, the, he, the lead singer, Andy Hole, has a bunch of side projects. Uh, one called Right Away Great Captain. It's just like a massive influence on the way I write. Um, and he's a pastor's kid too. So, um, And then I started doing uh, prison tours with my parents. Um, they have a prison ministry that they still do. Uh, and... Once we started doing that, I started to really look up to Johnny Cash because he kind of did the same thing. And so that was also a really big influence. Amazing. I was going to say, you have a bit of an, an interesting upbringing. I said unconventional family band is a phrase I heard. Um, so how do you feel that some of that, your upbringing, how did that feel like that really influenced your music and your songwriting outside of the things you were listening to? How do you feel like your past and c growing up the way you did influenced now where you are as an artist? Uh, I think that it, the biggest influence was to make sure, you know, my parents always drove into me to make sure you're, what you're doing is for other people because that's where you really find purpose is when you, once you find something that you're meant to do, use that to help other people. And doing those prison uh, shows like was such a big influence on me because those are people that the rest of the world considers complete outcasts and doesn't care about them at all. And there's still just a bunch of people that are living and just their lives are shit. And yeah, they're paying for what they did, but them going in there and being a light in such a dark place was like such a big influence. And I was like, I want to give this feeling to everybody. Uh, and so, yeah. That's amazing. Um, so we have, as we heard before, your breakout hit, Cringe, uh, going to radio this month, which is very exciting. Um, how did the so you spoke a little about the process and talking to Derek, but uh, how did the song come to be? And if you can talk to us a little bit about your general songwriting process. That song specifically is about a lot of different things and a lot of different people. It was at a period of my life where I was like, it was about a period of my life when I turned 18 and I moved out and I started to just get in a lot of trouble because, you know, I was raised in church most of my life. And so there's all these things that I was told not to do and never touch that I was like, I want to do and touch all these things. Uh, and so I did and I ended up just, you know, getting arrested a bunch and getting hooked on a bunch of drugs and like, when that happened, all the people that I thought were my friends in church and just in life in general, instead of reaching out to me and trying to help me, they kind of turned their backs on me and were like, you know, you're a bad influence on us, so leave us alone. Um, and so that's where the lyric, do I make you cringe, comes from. There you go. Um, so you have two EPs and a full-length record on the way. I'm sure all the fans in here are very excited to know what can we expect on the full-length record. Um, I've just been writing. I mean, every project that I put out is basically just the last two years of my life. I mean, writing songs about, you know, different experiences and the way I've grown, you know, mentally and, uh, you know, different situations that I've gone through and how I've handled them and perspectives of what if I handled this the wrong way, what would happen then? Like, who, what would Matt say if he did make the wrong decision? Um, and so I've just been writing for the last, like, year and... Yeah, it's just a bunch of songs about my shitty life. That real life stuff. Um, so we're here in the room with a bunch of fans who, an invite only event, you know, very exciting. I'm having kind of a super fan moment being up here doing this Q&A with you. So I'm sure everyone in here would like to know, what is a moment that you had that was your super fan moment? So do you have any moments where you met an artist you loved or a performer you loved or you couldn't believe you were in this situation? Like, have you had a moment in your career so far that's kind of blown your mind as a, as a music lover? Um... I'm not, I don't really get like, I mean, I've never 
I think if I met Andy Hole from Manchester Orchestra, I would like freak out a little bit. But I don't really get like starstruck by like musicians for some reason. Like it's more about things that I know I could never do. So like professional skateboarders, like I would get so nervous around them, even though they're like the chillest dudes. Um, and then I did I did meet King Cruel one time, which he's a big influence too. I was at a festival in uh, Orange County and we were staying at the same hotel and he got out and I was pretty drunk. And he like walked up and I was just like, I don't even remember. I literally was just like, your songs. And he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you, man. And just walked on and that's all that was. But. A, perf- a perfect fan moment, yeah. nice. Um, well, those are my questions. So now we're actually hoping we can turn it to the audience. If you guys have any questions for Matt, I'm hoping you can raise your hand and ask your question and then I will repeat your question for him and then he can answer it. So does anyone have any questions? What do you want? The hard hitting stuff. Right there in the front because I can see your hand. Um, it's, song? yeah, I heard it. I you actually know. heard it, yeah. For audio right purposes, I'm just, you know. Sorry, what was her question? She said, what is your favorite song and why? Uh, I, that's hard. I don't, I don't really have one. Uh, I mean, I have different favorite songs about different things, but it's usually whatever song I wrote last, because that's the freshest one, and that's the one I'm most pumped about. Right in the front. Is there a story behind the writing of Me and My Friends Are Lonely? Yeah, I wrote that song. I was on my f- very first tour, uh, and I was, it, I did, basically, this company gave me some money to do this tour, just enough to like book hotels and do the tour, but I quit my job, and so I had to live off that money for like a month before I went on tour, so by the time that happened, I like didn't have any left. So I just lived in my car the whole time, and I would just pull into like Walmart parking lots and sleep there in my car. And then I pulled into one one night, and I think it was in Iowa, and there was a out of business Wendy's across the street, and I was like, I th- it'll be way more comfortable if I just grab all my shit and I like climb on the roof of this Wendy's and just sleep up there. And Iowa sells whiskey in Walmart, so I went in there. And I bought a bottle of whiskey, and I climbed up on this roof, and that's where I wrote Me and My Friends Are Lonely. And then I went to sleep, and I went to sleep on my side, and I woke up, and the entire side of my face was just so sunburned, but just one side, but yeah. Let's see, see, hands. Any hands out there? Oh, right, right over there. What's your earliest memory of music? What is your earliest memory of music? Um, well, I was raised, like, in, like, my parents were in, like, Christian heavy metal bands when I was a baby, so they would just, like, let me nap while they played their heavy metal music, which is, like, gotta be terrible for my ears, but I'm fine. Um, but I do remember growing up watching them play, and I started playing on drums, because that's what my uncle did, which I mentioned his name in Unconditional. Uh, and he was a dude that uh, was like a criminal for a while and then kind of turned his life around and really wanted to help other people. And one of those people that he was helping ended up kind of going crazy and murdering him. And so, and that's what these tattoos are for. Um, and he was such a big inspiration to me because he played drums and he was just such a cool guy. Like he was, you know, I was like six years old and he was like my hero. And so I started playing drums and he left me his drum set. And so. I started playing drums until I was like 14. So I didn't actually start writing music until I was like 15. But yeah, I remember music since I was born, basically. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, where's one? Oh, I'm so sorry, I couldn't see your hand. You. Do you ever get emotional and break down when you're playing in front of a crowd? Do you ever get emotional and break down when you're playing in front of a crowd? Uh, no, I mean, I'll like, I'll cry a little bit sometimes, but I don't get emotional and break down like ever. <laughs> so, not really, no. Fair enough. Oh, in the back over there? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out, man. I want to get something that like means something, but I also just want to look sweet. 
I wanted to get the hearse for a little bit, um, but I just haven't. Um, so no, I don't. Um, check it out. Back there first, sorry, yeah. I yeah. Do the um, process, music or lyrics first. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. I'm here. Uh, no, not really. It, I kind of do both. I usually just sit down and I'll just start playing like different riffs on a guitar and I'll just like whatever comes to mind. I'll say a phrase or something and I'll be like, oh, that's crazy. And I'll write a song completely about that phrase and that way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back in New York a lot. Um, we don't have any tour dates right now, but we'll definitely be scheduling some. But yeah, I love playing in New York. We're playing tomorrow night too at Soho House. Is that tomorrow night? Yeah. And you can enter to win an, an RSVP for that. But yeah. Dream collab. I kind of hate that question because... <laughs> I don't, <laughs> so many people ask me that question and I'm like, I, I don't really like care to collab with anybody. Yeah. You're welcome. Red and solo. <laughs> okay, I'm looking, do I see any other hands? Any other questions for Matt? Oh. We can be done. Going twice, okay. Well, he said it, well thank you Matt for being here, thank you guys for being here, thank you Songkick for having us.